Then January 6 happens, and next thing you know, I organize the whole thing along with Steve Bannon here. When MTG gripes about the January 6th riot, one can only wonder what wars she is waging in her mind. And I want to tell you something. If Steve Bannon and I had organized that, we would have won. <laughs> Not to mention, it would have been armed. Yeah. See, that's the whole joke, isn't it? They say that whole thing was planned, and I'm like, are you kidding me? A bunch of conservatives, Second Amendment supporters went in the Capitol without guns, and they think that we organized that? I don't think so. For the love of war, MTG defends herself and her constituencies, complicit alongside her partner in crime, Steve Bannon, retconning the failed insurrectionist plot as an over-exaggerated protest, which videos and other evidence prove decisively otherwise. Still, with a devastating display of entitlement and recklessness coming from Marjorie, we can begin to deconstruct exactly why the radical right representative is so intent on reclaiming the narrative on January 6th. Just finished with our meetings here at the White House this afternoon. We had a, had a great planning session for our January 6th objection. We aren't going to let this election be stolen by Joe Biden and the Democrats. President Trump won by a landslide. Call your House reps, call your senators from your states. We've got to make sure they're on board and we already have a lot of people engaged. Okay, stay tuned. She shrugs off the recoil of such a violation of this country and the consensus of what happened being a shameful moment in our history. Provoked by fringe authoritarian figures like MTG, the Republican Party has never been shy about implicating violence into its practice. It's, it's there by design. But to sit in a ball gown in front of all your peers, in front of the colleagues whose lives you've threatened, and promising them a more grim fate if you were in charge, that sounds less like a compelling political strategy and more like a threat. And you continue to egg on on the insurrection, when you treat your supporters like militant resistors, implicating your base with an already disproven attack against the president's legitimacy. And this is what bothers me about the right and MTG, who insists she had no part in January 6th, and who claims she is not a figurehead of the alt-right threatening our democracy. And then the American people who pay for elections with their tax dollars actually own the elections and have have the right the right to care about their elections election integrity and the results of their elections when they came to Washington and protested all of you called it an insurrection and then when Joe Biden was inaugurated and this entire capital complex was surrounded with 30,000 National Guard troops none of you stood there and called that an insurrection oh no you all stayed silent. And what all MTG claims is that she is a merely dedicated representative serving her constituencies and the silent majority of the country. But we know the truth. MTG is intent on ripping this country apart. And for as much dog whistling as she does, she also knows, despite how much she tries to shield us from the truth. So why exactly does MTG want to protect the legacy around January 6th? Is it to defend her favorite orange in chief? Or is it to rewrite history and keep the progenity of the Republican Party? What does she have to gain from revising history and framing the defectors her base deployed as heroes instead of haters? It's the same reason why all of those protesters were there on January 6th. They were caught up in their delusions and they decided to act. And now that the consequences are coming back to bite them, they are walking back their advances in hopes of escaping judgment once again. And this includes MTG who has even more at stake with a public image and a political reputation to protect. It's in her best interest to frame January 6th as nothing more than a fluke. And ultimately the question will arise as to the legitimacy of 
politicians who threaten the institutions that don them their power, their responsibility. And that's key here because democracy, unlike other autocratic systems, are about a collective human project, not the celebrity of a few key officials. Obviously, MTG wants to feed her fame provoke her supporters into showing up to the polls and maybe even the Capitol or another congressional building for another protest. But the January 6th insurrection proved a stopgap for the American people, confronting us with the fragility of our American democracy and reminding us why we work together in the first place and why we fight back. It's a return to the fundamentals of democracy, a reckoning with the dangers of parasocial politics, enforcing political discord and congressional dysfunction. And MTG, born and bred to sow discord, sees this as a threat to her power. And she should be threatened because the clock is ticking until her MAGA in chief is behind bars. And who knows, maybe she'll join them. This is Adrian Costa with Rebel HQ. Make sure to like, comment, subscribe, and check back for more videos. See you guys soon.